What are things that make you angry or worried? Ivan Pavlov had been experimenting with dogs, and you remember the story of how he used to ring a bell when he gave the food and did that and did that until he could ring the bell and not give them food, and they would salivate just as they had done when they actually received the food. And he noticed from this that there's this kind of conditioned response. The animals moved from the stimulus to the response. And he theorized that all of us, people, animals, we all go from the stimulus to the response, and various teachings of psychology were based on those uh, understandings. Stephen Covey would later push back against this concept saying, wait a minute, in between stimulus and response there's a freedom to choose. It's a unique opportunity we have as people to not just end up automatically somewhere. But even beyond what Stephen Covey would say is the challenge I see in the book SOS, Help for Emotions by Lynn Clark. There's a whole lot more detail in the long version of this message, and I hope you have time to chug through that. It can be so life-changing. But for now, I just want to grab a quick couple of highlights in how the Bible and that teaching of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, can really help us. He simplifies it with the idea of the ABCs of emotions. A, activating event. B, belief or self-talk. And C, the consequence or the outcome, the thing that happens. We see so many examples in the Bible of how the ABCs of emotions function. For example, David back there with Nabal in 1 Samuel 25. I don't have time to explain it here, but I want to jump way down to the story of Jesus reinstating Peter. John 21, verse 9. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. In Greek, that fire of coals is anthrakion. And when I first read that, I thought, wait a minute, you don't see this word often. In fact, I only remember seeing it one other time in the whole book of John. Anthrakion showed up in chapter 18, verse 18. And there Peter was warming his hands over a fire, and he turned and denied Jesus three times. Well, now after Jesus miraculously helped Peter and the six helpers catch 153 big fish, they came to the shore, and there was the Anthrakion again, that charcoal fire. And as Jesus was serving them breakfast, he brought Peter back to an ABC where there'd been failure and turned it to become an ABC where there would be success or victory. The first time around, there as Peter warmed his hands, the activating event was some kind of servant saying, uh, you're one of them. And Peter's belief and self-talk was, uh-oh, if they recognize who I really am, they will hurt and maybe kill me too. And that led to the consequence of his denying Jesus three times. But this time Jesus brings him very carefully to an activating event that would feel very familiar, very similar, and yet it had a very positive twist on it because he was changing the belief and the self-talk. Verse 15, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. Simon, son of Jonah, that's what Jesus said the first time they met. And he looked at Simon, and he is calling him by the name that he was born with, Shimon, hearing Simon, you should be hearing me. And yet, before Jesus is taking him back there, you notice John is calling him Simon Peter. That's a name that Jesus gave him when he first met. Now, there are a couple of other things going on here. As Jesus said, do you love me? He uses the word agape love, you know, like that godly love, according to the way the apostles used it in the Bible. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 tells what agape love is like. It's really like God's character. And he's asking Peter here, do you have that kind of love for me? And Peter comes back, even though he says yes, he uses the other word, phileo, you know, philose, I love you with a brotherly love. But you see one other thing that's changing when we get to the next verse. 16, he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Did you see the change? The first time around, Jesus said, Do you love me more than these? And now he just says, Do you love me? That stings. It's like it's no longer a comparison. It's like, do you even have that kind of love? But still, Jesus is saying, You, you know, that agape love. And Peter's saying, No. He doesn't say no, but Peter's saying, I have that brotherly love for you, the phila'o love. 
verse 17, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? This time he's no longer using the word agape. He says, Phileis me, do you love me with brotherly love? Ah, it keeps getting more and more pointed in its focus. First, do you love me the godly way more than these? Then, as Peter's saying, I have brotherly love for you. The next one, well, do you have godly love for me? And not even compared to other people, just do you have it? And Peter says, you know, I love you with brotherly love. And now the third time he's saying, do you even have brotherly love for me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? The third time, you know, do you have that brotherly love? So I'm not sure if he's grieved because it's a third time or grieved because this time it's do you even have the brotherly love? Probably both. It's taking his mind back to his day of failure. But Jesus is changing that activating event and belief and self-talk so that when things come back to remind him of you failed your Lord, he will be reminded your Lord reinstated you. He is commissioning you to represent him. He trusts you again. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And then after describing how Peter was going to face death one day, Jesus said, follow me. That's the same thing he says in Matthew 4, I think it's verse 19. Once he brought Peter from his fishing, he said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. What a powerful new turn. At each step, Jesus is going back. Remember when we first met, I called you Simon, son of Jonah. I called you to follow me. I brought you along in the journey to work with me, leading people to come to know me. Jesus chose to take the ABC of failure and turn it into an ABC of victory. And he would like to do that for you too. In the longer version, we go and follow through a particular psalm that is very powerful in helping to release some of the negative emotions so that we can be healed from that stuff. But we'll leave that for the longer version. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your care for us personally. Help us to be transformed by your spirit inside, changing the paths that led us down the wrong roads into positive directions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you as you continue mining the word.